Nathan, fast cars, fast bikes, is this the life of a young boxer, <laughs> Commonwealth champion? Well, it's, uh, it's something that I've worked towards and uh, it's nice, it's nice to have the treat, you know, after, after, after a nice victory, it's nice to, um, I suppose, treat yourself now and again. What did family say when you said, I want to get a bike? I mean, obviously you're a professional boxer and 21 years old, just starting on your road to glory and you go off and buy a motorbike and notoriously they can be sometimes unsafe if people are silly on them. What did the family say when you said, I want to buy a motorbike? Um, well, you know, just be careful, basically. Uh, <laughs> and I, are you? I haven't gone out on my bike too much in the winter. I, I leave it for the summer, so um, it, it's no problem, really. I guess it's all about speed with Nathan Cleverly, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, all about speed, yeah. It's, uh, it sounds a bit cheesy, but <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Nathan Cleverly, thanks for talking to FrankWine.tv, letting us uh, into your home and uh, some of the training that you've been doing. It's a uh, just a day or so to go now until your second defence of your Commonwealth light heavy belt against Samson Onyango. A little known Kenyan, but uh, still obviously very dangerous because almost little you know about them can make it harder, like your last opponent, right? Yeah, potentially. They're very dangerous. That's, that's the problem is, is when it's a, an unknown opponent, they can be very dangerous. I don't know what he's going to bring to the table. Um, as soon as the first bell goes, that's, that's when I'll first know. Last time out, uh, you thought you were going to have uh, someone who was, I think, uh, shorter and maybe lighter. So I actually had a southpaw who was uh, quite able, and you stopped him. How proud are you of, of the fact that you actually stopped him? Because I know that's something that you've been working on, increasing your power. Yeah, well, I, I thought he was orthodox all the way along. Um, the first bell rang, he came out, he was southpaw. <laughs> I thought he was having me going for a moment, but he stayed like that for, for four rounds. But uh, that was up until I, I knocked him out, and... Yeah, I'm proud of that, and uh, it just, it's just a sign that uh, my power's improving. It's your second defence of your Commonwealth title, as I mentioned before. Uh, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like you've had this belt for ages and you've been Commonwealth champion for a while. Do you get that same sort of feeling, or are you very much feeling like I'm very new to this? Um, I wouldn't say it feels as though I'm new to this, because I think I expected to, mm. to, to come to this, and um, I think that's why it seems like I've been Commonwealth champion for, mm. for a while because I was expected to get to this level, in myself anyway. And um, I just got to capitalise on that and remain champion. It's true that no one looks past their next fight, but we do have to talk about, uh, I think, the anticipation, anticipated fight that's on everybody's lips, and that's Dean Francis. Uh, you know on TV we spoke to him just the other day about his uh, fight on the same bill, Friday the 13th, and obviously you. Um, and he, I said, you know, you watched it, is it going to be a maturity against inexperience? And he said no, because Nathan Cleverly doesn't look like a real light heavyweight. Wasn't they saying that against Tony Oki? <laughs> you know, it was a man against a, a boy then, but look what happened. And I'm developing into the weight. I'm developing into a true light heavyweight. And no matter what anybody says, as long as I've got the belief that I can take any light heavyweight in Britain, that's all that matters. And I, I truly believe that. Now, I know all the boxers have a great deal of respect for each other. You know, we're not trying to get into a slanging match here or there, but we do want to get it into the mind of how boxers think about potential opponents coming up. So when it comes to Dean Francis, uh, you know, he is 35, and obviously he's, he's a, what he says is a fully grown man. But also, Nathan, you know he can really bang. That's just not to be hidden about Dane, Dean Francis. How do you, do you think you cope with that sort of power? I'm aware of that. I know he's a, he's a real danger man out there, and for... You know, I think it shows the courage that I've got for, you know, being prepared to take that fight. I think it shows that I've got the courage, I've got the heart to, to call out the best, and um, I'm prepared to back it up. I've done it once against Tony Oki, who's probably one of the best light heavyweights in Great Britain. If uh, the fight with Dean Francis happens, then then so be it. I'm I'm ready for it. But if uh, I'm not too sure whether he's going to look for for other things elsewhere, bigger fights, bigger paydays, maybe so. But, you know, I've just got to concentrate on, on myself and on my career and I can't look past this guy on Friday night and I've got to be prepared for anything. For yourself and your career, how badly do you want the British title? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a good scalp to have on your belt. It's uh, a prestigious, the prestigious Lonsdale belt. It's always nice to have and um, that's, that's a stepping stone, hopefully, to, to bigger and better things. I'm looking to be world champion. Well, we've come down to uh, your, your, your home here in Blackwood in South Wales and uh, watched you, first of all, letting cameras into your house. And tell us what was happening today with the, the cameras and, you, and you know, filming you working. Well, I, I quite enjoy it. It was a, it's a nice relaxing day and uh, I suppose it, 
it's a nice easy day off training and uh, little bits and pieces so yeah it's just basically a, an insight into into my life and my days with my with my education and my um my my studies at university and then the contrast then coming up to the gym and mm. and doing the physical the physical side of things but before we got to the gym we went to the fields and we saw where you go for runs normally and we saw the hills that you run up Nathan yeah it's amazing scenery here what do you do in an area like this um, well, basically, I, I don't use this, this field for much. I just do my warm-up lap around the field. And then, if we go a little bit further up, we, we'll have the, where I do my hill runs then. So, warm-up lap around this field, I mean, how long does that take you? Uh, the, the, it's a little dip. It goes on to another field. And, um, basically, it's, it's only about a five-minute warm-up. get the oxygen going into our lungs. As well as being training, this is, like, a really peaceful place, though. It must be nice coming out and, sort of, going for runs around here. Yeah, it is. You know, I enjoy it. Sometimes I just put my music on and I just relax and, and get in the zone. Yeah. Nathan, I know you're probably tired of running up those hills, but just uh, tell the viewers at frankrun.tv how far do you think that hill is and how many times do you do it? Well, that, was, that was only a sample, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, generally we do a few sessions before the fight. Um, but just, you know, only a few. We explore it work, really. Yeah, you know, so it's not too many until I suppose I go until my uh, until my legs tell me to stop. You've got a cross country background as well, so do you yeah. do you find hill work and uh, these sort of long runs particularly difficult or yeah, particularly well, I, easy? I, I mix up my running to be honest. It's, this is just this is just something you know to, to bring up the monotony of the of the long runs which I do, and um, they take place on the roads obviously. But yeah, I've I've got a bit of a background and. Um, it's all, it's all uh, you know, it's, it's all coming handy now for, yeah. the, for the future. And you go from here to the gym and uh, just use normal gym work? Yeah, that's it. I, I, I sometimes separate my sessions. Um, this, is just, this is just one of the things for, for starters, really. <laughs> and then uh, we move on to the gym and we see what goes on in the gym then. Thanks, mate. Yeah, thanks, Con. I'm finding my optimum weight now. You know, it's only now I'm really trying to, or I'm truly growing into a light heavyweight. And there's still a little bit more to come, but uh, as far as that's going, the, the power's going to increase with, with maturity and with age as well. You've spoken about growing into that weight as a light heavyweight. I mean, because you've actually physically grown taller as well, which makes you almost a little unusual because you're lean, and then as Dean Francis pointed out, you didn't actually look like a light heavy, although I know he wasn't being disrespectful, but he was just saying that, you know, that uh, you, you, didn't, you looked more like you still had a young man's physique. Yeah, a, f a few people have touched on that. I don't, I don't particularly look a, a, a big light heavyweight. I think it's because of my frame, I'm tall and, and, and slim. But uh, there's not much fat, body fat on me, so uh, I don't know where the weight is. How tall are you now? Um, I'm around about six three and a half. So um, where the weight is coming from, I'm not too sure. <laughs> but uh, uh, like Dean touched on when he saw me at the press conference, but uh, he looked like an heavyweight. <laughs> he looked great. But, uh, yeah, there we are. Okay, let's go. Friday the 13th in Swindon. You're topping the bill again. What's that like? Yes, yeah, it's, it's just a privilege, you know. I, this is the the moments I've been dreaming, dreaming since I was a, a young a young boy, um, top in the bill, holding a title, um, being the main man, and um, it's a nice responsibility. And uh, I like the press, press, uh, pressure situations. Yeah. It brings out the best in me. And I know that it's uh, it's uh, you haven't had a fight in you know at home yet here in Wales, terms of where you've been topping the bill. That is, so, but this is not too far for your fans to come. I guess you're going to expect a good turnout, Nathan Cleverly fans. Yeah, it's a sh short track down the M4, and I've got a, I've got two bus loads going down, so um, they're all looking forward to it, and it, it should be a good night in, in total. Some good fights on as well. Nathan, thanks very much. Thanks a lot.